My name is Amanda. Je m'appelle Melissa. And I'm Lisa. And you have joined us for One Book, One Night, The Lover by Marguerite Duras. All right, everyone. So uh, like Amanda said, this is an interactive program. We're going to start it off right off the bat. I probably expect you guys to be in agreement. I want to know, uh, prior to this evening, how familiar were you with Marguerite Duras? Uh, yes, absolutely. Maybe you'd only heard the name or maybe not at all. So go ahead and vote and let us know. Leave it out for just a few more seconds. Okay, very nice. Everyone's voted. Um, and as I thought, not at all. Very nice. Uh, so here you are getting some education as well as some entertainment. Marguerite Duras was a very famous French novelist, um, mostly active in the 1950s, 60s. She was quite controversial, quite outspoken, and she wrote a lot about her own life. And we're going to share about her life um, a little bit today. So now, if you guys can see my screen, I'm going to move on to Lisa's recommendation for you. Do you want to read a book that's similar to The Lover? So the book shout out that I chose was The Blue Flower. Um, it's set in the romantic movement um, time in Germany. Um, so we're talking late 1700s here. Uh, it's a look at the poet Novalis. Um, his real name was Friedrich von Hardenberg. But it's, a, it's kind of a sweet and funny, but also tragic tale. Um, the library has the ebook and the audiobook available. And for those of you who might want a large text version, there is a print version of that available for checkout as well. Very nice. Thank you very much, Lisa. Um, just another poll before we get started with our reading. We're curious about your taste and what you guys think. Uh, what do you think of this recommendation? Does it sound like your cup of tea, as it were? Maybe you've heard of it already, or is it maybe not really your style? Maybe you're more into mysteries. I don't know. So I'll leave it up for. Oh, actually, you guys, very nice. You have all voted. Let's see. Some of you think it'd be interesting, and for others, not really your style. Let us know more in the comments if you have other books that sound similar. Uh, we'd love to read those out afterwards. Okay, so very nice. Before we do start, uh, we do have a small discussion after our reading, and we want you guys to think about the emotions or thoughts that the author's fixation on details really evoke. And maybe we can also talk about what details have been important for you in your life in significant circumstances. As you'll see, the author is looking back at a very important time in her life, and she does talk about details a lot. So keep the discussion in mind, and afterwards, we'll circle back, and we want to hear from you guys. One day, I was already old. In the entrance of a public place, a man came up to me. He introduced himself and said, I've known you for years. Everyone says you were beautiful when you were young, but I want to tell you that I think you're more beautiful now than then. Rather than your face as a young woman, I prefer your face as it is now, ravaged. I often think of the image only I can see now, and of which I've never spoken. It's always there in the same silence, amazing. It's the only image of myself I like, the only one in which I recognize myself, in which I delight. Adieu. J'étais âgé déjà dans les halles d'un lieu public. Un homme est venu vers moi. Il s'est fait connaître et il m'a dit, « Je vous connais depuis toujours. Tout le monde dit que vous étiez belle lorsque vous étiez jeune. Je suis venu pour vous dire que pour moi, je vous trouve plus belle maintenant que lorsque vous étiez jeune. J'aimais moins votre visage de jeune femme que celui que vous avez maintenant, dévasté. Je pense souvent à cette image que je suis seule à voir encore et dont je n'ai jamais parlé. Elle est toujours là, dans le même silence émerveillant. C'est entre toutes celles qui me plaisent de moi-même, celles où je me reconnais, où je m'enchante. Un día, ya entrada en años, en el vestíbulo de un edificio público, un hombre se me acercó. Se dio a conocer y me dijo, la conozco desde siempre. Todo el mundo dice de joven era usted hermosa. Me he acercado para decirle que, en mi opinión, la considero más hermosa ahora que en su juventud. Su rostro de muchacha me gustaba menos, mucho menos que el de ahora. Devastado. Pienso con frecuencia en esta imagen que solo yo sigo viendo y de la que nunca he hablado. Siempre está ahí en el mismo silencio, deslumbrante. Es la que más me gusta de mí misma. Aquella en la que me reconozco, en la que me fascino. So I'm 15 and a half. I'm on a ferry crossing the Mekong, crossing the Mekong River. 
the image lasts all the way across. I'm 15 and a half. There are no seasons in that part of the world. We just have the one season, hot, monotonous. We're in the long, hot girdle of the earth with no spring, no renewal. I'm at a state boarding school in Saigon. I eat and sleep there, but I go to classes at the French high school. My mother is a teacher and wants her girls to have a secondary education. You have to go to high school. Que je veux dis encore, j'ai 15 ans et demi. C'est le passage d'un bar sur le Mekong. L'image dure pendant toute la traversée du fleuve. J'ai 15 ans et demi, il n'y a pas de saison dans ce pays-là. Nous sommes dans une saison unique, chaude, monotone. Nous sommes dans la longue zone chaude de la terre, pas de printemps, pas de renouveau. Je suis dans une pension d'état à Ségon. Je dors et je mange là, dans cette pension, mais je vais en classe au dehors, au lycée français. Ma mère, institutrice, veut le secondaire pour sa petite fille. Pour toi, c'est le secondaire qu'il faudra. Ce qui était suffisant pour elle ne l'est plus pour là. Diré más. Tengo 15 años y medio. El paso de un transportador por la Mekong. La imagen persiste durante toda la travesía del río. Tengo 15 años y medio. En ese país, las estaciones no existen. Vivimos en una estación única, cálida, monótona, que nos hallamos en la larga zona cálida de la tierra. No hay primavera, no hay renovación. Estoy en un pens pensionado estatal, en Saigán. Duermo y como allí, en ese pensionado, pero voy a clase fuera, a la escuela francesa. Mi madre, maestra, desea enseñanza secundaria para su niña. Para ti necesitaremos la enseñanza secundaria. I've often been told it was because of spending all one's childhood in too strong a son, but I've never believed it. I've also been told it was because being poor made us brood, but no, that wasn't it. Children like little old men because of chronic hunger, yes, but us, no, we weren't hungry. We were white children. We were ashamed. We sold our furniture, but we weren't hungry. We had a houseboy and we ate. Sometimes, admittedly, we ate garbage, storks, baby crocodiles, but the garbage was cooked and served by a houseboy and sometimes we refused it too. We indulged in the luxury of declining to eat. No, something occurred when I was 18 to make this face happen. It must have been at night. On m'a souvent dit que c'était le soleil trop fort pendant toute l'enfance, mais je ne l'ai pas cru. On m'a dit aussi que c'était la réflexion dans laquelle la misère plongeait les enfants. Mais non, ce n'est pas ça. Les enfants vieillards de la femme endémique, oui, mais nous, non. Nous n'avions pas faim, nous étions des enfants blancs. Nous avions honte, nous vendions nos meubles, mais nous n'avions pas faim. Nous avions un boy et nous mangions parfois des vrais, des saloperies, des échassiers, des petits caïmans. Mais ces saloperies étaient cuites par un boy et servies par lui et parfois aussi nous les refusions. Nous nous permettions ce luxe de ne pas vouloir manger. Non, il est arrivé quelque chose lorsque j'ai eu 18 ans qui a fait que ce visage a eu lieu. Ça devait se passer la nuit. Con frecuencia me han dicho que la causa era el sol demasiado intenso durante toda la infancia, pero no lo he creído. También me he dicho que era el ensimismamiento en el que la miseria sume a los niños, pero no, no es eso. Los niños viejos del hambre endémica, sí, pero nosotros no. No teníamos hambre. Nosotros éramos niños blancos. Nosotros teníamos vergüenza. Nosotros vendíamos nuestros muebles, pero no teníamos hambre. Nosotros teníamos un criado y comíamos, y comíamos, a veces, es cierto, porquerías, zancudas, caimanes, pero tales porquerías estaban conocidas por un criado y, y servidas por él, y a veces incluso que no, lo, no las queríamos. Nos permitíamos el lujo de no querer comer. No. Algo sucedió, sucedió cuando tenía 18 años que motivó que ese rostro fuera como es. Debió de suceder por la noche. 
All right, guys. So it's time to take a short mini break. And I do want to let you guys know about a service that we have called Universal Class. As you can tell, uh, the writer is remembering or struggling to remember, thinking she remembers her childhood. And she's using it as part of her book. Um, we have a lot of classes at Universal Class, from soap making to French culture to memory improvement that you guys see here. They offer continuing education credits. They are all self-paced and they are free with your library card. Um, so like I said, I'm going to run some polls during the program and I just wanna ask you guys, have you ever taken a class from Universal Class here with the library? Free online, tons, maybe one, or maybe none. You guys are pretty fast voters. I'll leave it up for just a few more seconds though. Okay, very nice. A lot of you guys have voted and you said that you have not taken a class yet. Um, if, that, if that sounds interesting to you, definitely check out Universal Class. There is something for everyone. Um, I'm taking a haunted um, house class right now. So that's pretty interesting. Back Melissa, to our also for certain jobs for those classes, you can get your CEUs, your continuing education units. So you might wanna check if you have to get any of those with your job, you may be able to get those through Universal Class. Very nice. The story of my life doesn't exist, does not exist. There's never any center to it, no path, no line. There are great spaces where you pretend there used to be someone, but it's not true. There was no one. The story of one small part of my youth I've already written, more or less. I mean, enough to give a glimpse of it. But this part, I mean, the part about the crossing of the river, what I'm doing now is both different and the same. Before, I spoke of clear periods, there on which the light fell. Now I'm talking about the hidden stretches of that same youth, of certain facts, feelings, events that I buried. L'histoire de ma vie n'existe pas. Ça n'existe pas. Il n'y a jamais de centre. Pas de chemin, pas de ligne. Il y a de vastes endroits où l'on fait croire qu'il y avait quelqu'un. Ce n'est pas vrai. Il n'y avait personne. L'histoire d'une toute petite part de ma jeunesse, je l'ai plus ou moins écrite déjà. Enfin, je veux dire de quoi l'apercevoir. Je parle de celle-ci, justement, de celle de la traversée du fleuve. Ce que je fais ici est différent et pareil. Avant, je parlais de périodes claires, de celles qui étaient éclairées. Ici, je parle des périodes cachées de cette même jeunesse, de certains enfouissements que j'aurais opérés sur certains faits, sur certains sentiments, sur certains événements. L'histoire de ma vie no existe. Eso no existe. Nunca hay centro, ni camino, ni línea. Hay vastos pasajes donde se insinúa que alguien hubo. No es cierto, no hubo nadie. Ya he escrito, más o menos, la historia de una reducida parte de mi juventud. En fin, quiero decir que es que la he dejado entrever. Me refiero precisamente a esta, la de la travesía del río. Con interioridad, He hablado de los periodos claros, de los que estaban clarificados. Aquí hablo de los periodos ocultos de mi juventud, de ciertos ocultamientos a los que he sometido ciertos hechos, ciertos sentimientos, ciertos sucesos. So it's during the crossing of a branch of the Mekong on the ferry that plies between Bin Long and Sadak and the great plain of mud and rice in the southern Cochin, China the plain of the birds. I'm wearing a dress of real silk, but it's threadbare, almost transparent. It used to belong to my mother. One day she decided the color was too light for her and she gave it to me. It's a sleeveless dress with a very low neck. It's the sepia color real silk takes on with wear. It's a dress I remember. I think it suits me. I'm wearing a leather belt with it, perhaps a belt belonging to one of my brothers. I can't remember the shoes I used to wear in those days, only certain dresses. Most of the time I wore canvas sandals, no stockings. I'm speaking of the time before the high school in Saigon. Since then, of course, I've always worn shoes. C'est donc pendant la traversée d'un bras du Mekong sur le bac qui est entre Van Long et Sadek dans la grande plaine de bœufs et de riz du sud de la Cochin Chine, celle des oiseaux. Je porte une robe de soie naturelle, elle est usée, presque transparente. Avant, elle a été une robe de ma mère. Un jour, elle ne l'a plus mise parce qu'elle la trouvait trop claire, elle me l'a donnée. 
cette robe est sans manche, très décolletée. Elle est de ce bistre qui prend la soie naturelle à l'usage. C'est une robe dont je me souviens. Je trouve qu'elle me va bien. J'ai mis une ceinture de cuir à la taille, peut-être une ceinture de mes frères. Je ne me souviens pas des chaussures que je portais ces années-là, mais seulement de certaines robes. La plupart du temps, je suis pieds nus en sandales de toile. Je pars du temps qui a précédé le collège de Ségan. À partir de là, bien sûr, j'ai toujours mis des chaussures. Es pues durante la travesía de un brazo del Mekong en el transbordador que se halla entre Bilong y Sadek en la gran planicie de Barro y de Arroz, del sur de la Cochinchina, la de los pájaros. Llevo un vestido de seda natural, usado, casi transparente. Con anterioridad fue un vestido de mi madre. Un día dejó de ponérselo porque lo consideraba demasiado claro. Me, la, me lo dio. Es un vestido sin mangas, muy escotado. Tiene ese lustre que adquiere la seda natural con el uso. Recuerdo ese vestido. Creo que me sienta bien. Le puse un cinturón de cuero en la cintura. Quizás un cinturón de mis hermanos. No recuerdo qué zapatos llevaba en esa época. Solo algunos vestidos. La mayoría parte del tiempo voy con los pies desnudos en sandalias de lona. Me refiero a la época anterior al colegio de Sagan. A partir de ese momento, siempre llevo zapatos, por supuesto. Ese día, debo llevar el famoso par de tacones altos de lame dorado. All right, guys. So another thing that we really uh, want to highlight is this picture, this screenshot of the movie The Lover from 1992 is available to watch for free. Uh, we do have the DVD from the library, of course, but you can stream it on our streaming service called Canopy. And um, this was an award-winning movie. You can actually see the dresses and the hat that she's going to talk about later. They do change out the shoes, but I will say you guys can watch 10 movies a month. There are a lot of wonderful movies from a lot of different places. Uh, the Studio A24 is one of my favorites. And you guys, of course, would have unlimited viewings of the great courses on Canopy that we also subscribe to. So you have entertainment um, and you also have some things that you can do for your own learning. Um, so I want to ask you guys if you like the last movie you watched on Canopy, uh, yes, no, or, or maybe you haven't seen your first movie on Canopy at all. I'm watching a documentary um, right now that I'm kind of enjoying. It's a little bit slow, but we'll see where it takes me. I'm kind of watching it a little bit slowly. Oh, okay. So it looks like you guys have voted and you guys have not seen your first movie on Canopy. Check it out. You can connect it to your Roku. You can connect it to your TV. Um, there are so many great award-winning movies that you guys can watch. So it's all free with your library card. Check out Canopy and ask us afterwards if you want to know a little bit more information about it. So I'm really excited for everyone here. Yay. Let's go on. I've always worn shoes. This particular day, I must be wearing the famous pair of gold lame high heels. I can't see any others I could have been wearing, so I'm wearing them. Bargains, final reductions brought to bought for me by my mother. I'm wearing these gold lame shoes to school, going to school in evening shoes decorated with little diamante flowers. I insist on wearing them. I don't like myself in any others, and to this day, I still like myself in them. These high heels are the first in my life. They're beautiful. They've eclipsed all the shoes that went before, the flat ones for playing and running about, made of white canvas. Ce jour-là, je dois porter cette fameuse paire de talons hauts en lame or. Je ne vois rien d'autre que je pourrais porter ce jour-là, alors je les porte. Sol soldé que ma mère m'a acheté. Je porte ces lame or pour aller au lycée. Je vais au lycée en chaussures de soir ornées de petites monifs en straf. C'est ma volonté. Je ne me supporte qu'avec cette paire de chaussures-là et encore maintenant je me veux comme ça. Ces talons hauts sont les premières de ma vie. Ils sont beaux. Ils ont éclipsé toutes les chaussures qui les ont précédées. Celles pour courir et jouer plates de toile blanche. Ce día, debo llevar un famoso par de tacones altos de la mé dorado. No se me ocurre que otros podría llevar ese día. 
o sea que los llevo. Rebajas rebajadas, como compró mi madre. Llevo esos lames dorados para ir al instituto. Voy al instituto con zapatos de noche, ornados con ordanillos de lustrina, por capricho. Solo me soporto con ese par de zapatos, y aún ahora me gusto así. Esos tacones altos son los primeros de mi vida. Son bonitos. Han eclipsado a todos los zapatos que los han presidido. Los zapatos para correr y jugar, planos de lona blanca. It's not the shoes, though, that make the girl look so strangely, so weirdly dressed. No, it's the fact that she's wearing a man's flat-brimmed hat, a brownish-pink fedora with a broad black ribbon. The crucial ambiguity of the image lies in the hat. How I came by it, I've forgotten. I can't think of who could have given it to me. It must have been my mother who bought it for me because I asked her. The one thing certain is that it was another markdown, another final reduction. But why was it bought? No woman, no girl wore a man's fedora in that colony then. No native woman either. What must have happened is I tried on just for fun, look at myself in the shopkeeper's class and see that there, beneath the man's hat, the thin, awkward shape, the inadequacy of childhood has turned into something else, has ceased to be a harsh, inescapable imposition of nature, has become on the contrary, a provoking choice of nature a choice of the mind. Suddenly, it's deliberate. Ce ne sont pas les chaussures qui font ce qu'il y a d'insolite, d'inouïe, ce jour-là, dans la tenue de la petite. Ce qu'il y a ce jour-là, c'est que la petite porte sur la tête un chapeau d'homme au bord plat, un feutre souple couleur bois de rose au large ruban noir. L'ambiguïté déterminante de l'image, elle est dans ce chapeau. Comment il était arrivé jusqu'à moi, je l'ai oublié. Je ne vois pas que me, qui me l'aurait donné. Je crois que c'est ma mère qui me l'a acheté. Et sur ma demande, seule sortitude, c'était un seul soldé. Comment expliquer cet achat? Aucune femme, aucune jeune fille ne porte pas de feutre d'homme dans cette colonie à cette époque-là. Aucune femme indigène non plus. Voilà ce qui a dû arriver. C'est que j'ai essayé ce feutre pour rire, comme ça, que je me suis regardé dans le miroir du marchand et que j'ai vu sous le chapeau d'homme la minceur en crade de la forme, ce défaut de l'enfance est devenu autre chose. Elle a cessé d'être une donnée brutale, fatale de la nature. Elle est devenue tout à l'opposé, un choix, contrariant de celle-ci, un choix de l'esprit. Non sont les sapatos la causa de que, ese día, hay algo insólito, inaudito, en la vestimenta de la pequeña. Lo que ocurre ese día es la que la pequeña se toca la cabeza con un sombrero de hombre. De ala plana, un sombrero de fieltro flexible de color de palo de rosa con una ancha cinta negra. La ambigüedad determinante de la imagen radica en ese sombrero. He olvidado cómo llego a mis manos. No se me ocurre quién pudo dármelo. Creo que fue mi madre quien me lo compró y a instancias mías. Única certeza. Era una rebaja rebajada. ¿Cómo explicar esa compra? Ninguna mujer, ninguna chica lleva un sombrero de fieltro, de hombre, en la colonia en esa época. Ninguna mujer nativa tampoco. Eso es lo que debo ocurrir. Debí probarme el sombrero, en broma. Sin más, me miré en el espejo del vendedor y vi, bajo el sombrero del hombre, la delgadez ingrata de la silueta. Ese efecto de la infancia se convirtió en otra cosa. Dejó de ser un elemento brutal, fatal, de la naturaleza. Se convirtió, por el contrario, en una opción contradictoria de esta, una opción del espíritu. On the ferry, beside the bus, there's a big black limousine with a chauffeur in white cotton livery. Inside the limousine, there's a very elegant man looking at me. He's not a white man. He's wearing European clothes, the light to soar suit of the Saigon bankers. He's looking at me. I'm used to people looking at me. People do look at white women in the colonies, at 12-year-old white girls, too. For the past three years, white men, too, have been looking at me in the streets. And my mother's men friends have been kindly asking me to have tea with them while their wives are out playing tennis at the sporting club. 
Sur le bac, à côté du car, il y a une grande limousine noire avec un chauffeur en livret du coton blanc. Dans la limousine, il y a un homme très élégant qui me regarde. Ce n'est pas un blanc. Il est vêtu à l'européenne. Il porte le costume du tuteur clair des banquiers de second. Il me regarde. J'ai déjà l'habitude qu'on me regarde. On regarde les blanches aux colonies et les petites filles blanches de 12 ans aussi. Depuis trois ans, les blancs aussi me regardent dans les rues et les amis de ma mère me demandent gentiment de venir goûter chez eux à l'heure où leurs femmes jouent au tennis au club sportif. Dans le transportador, junto à l'autocar, il y a une grande limousine negra con un chauffeur con librea de algodón blanca. Entre les chauffeurs et les señores, il y a des cristales corredores. Aún hay asientos plegables. Aún es amplio como una habitación. En la limusina hay un hombre muy elegante que me mira. No es un blanco. Viste a la europea. Lleve el traje de tusor blanco propios de los banqueros de Saigon. Me mira. Ya estoy acostumbrada a que me miren. Miren a las blancas de las colonias. Y a las niñas blancas de 12 años también. Desde hace tres años, los blancos también me miran por las calles y los amigos de mi madre me piden amablemente que vaya a merendar a su casa por la hora en que sus mujeres jueguen al tenis en el club deportivo. All right, you guys, so hopefully you're here because you're interested in curious and languages as well as literature and spending time with the library. So if you guys haven't checked out the language learning application Mango, that's free with your library card, I definitely would like you guys to uh, learn it. One of my favorite features is when you can line up your recording of your voice with the recording sample and play those both at the same time. As you guys can see here, that's my voice, that's a sample recording, and here you can play them at the same time so that you can compare yourself and your pronunciation. It is honestly one of the coolest things that we have. Um, and I maybe would like to ask you what language would you like to take the most on Mingo? Um, so in keeping with our events, French or Vietnamese, or you know, there is an option called Pirate in Mango that you can learn. So I'd like to see what you guys would like to do and how you vote. I'll just give it a few more seconds. All right, so it looks like you guys want to learn French. Well, I am very honored given that French is one that I am partial to as well. Hopefully you guys check out Mango. Um, you can download it also on your phone so that it doesn't use data. And there are a lot of assessments and placement quizzes for the most popular languages as well. So something else that you guys can do. Here we go. The elegant man got out of the limousine and is smoking an English cigarette. He looks at the girl in the man's fedora and the gold shoes. He slowly comes, comes over to her. He's obviously nervous. He doesn't smile to begin with. To begin with, he offers her a cigarette. His hand is trembling. There's the difference of race. He's not white. He has to get the better of it. That's why he's trembling. She says she doesn't smoke. No thanks. She doesn't say anything else. Doesn't say, leave me alone. So he's less afraid. He tells her he must be dreaming. She doesn't answer. There's no point in answering. What would she say? She waits. So he asks, but where did you spring from? She says she's the daughter of the headmistress of the girls' school in Sadek. L'homme élégant est descendu de la limousine. Il fume une cigarette anglaise. Il regarde la jeune fille au feutre d'homme aux chaussures d'or. Il vient vers elle lentement. C'est visible, il est intimidé. Il ne sourit pas tout d'abord. Tout d'abord, il lui offre une cigarette. Sa main tremble. Il y a cette différence de race. Il n'est pas blanc qu'il doit la surmonter. C'est pourquoi il tremble. Elle lui dit qu'elle ne fume pas. Non, merci. Elle ne dit rien d'autre. Elle ne lui dit pas « Laissez-moi tranquille ». Alors, il a moins peur. Alors, il lui dit qu'il croit rêver. Elle ne répond pas. Ce n'est pas la peine qu'elle réponde. Que répondrait-elle Elle attend. Alors, il lui demande « Mais d'où venez-vous » Elle dit qu'elle est la fille de l'institutrice de les écoles des filles de Sadek. El hombre elegante se ha apeado de la limusina. Fumó un cigarrillo inglés. Mira a la jovencita con sombrero de fieltro, de hombre y zapatos dorados. Se dirige lentamente hacia ella. Resulta evidente. Está intimidado. Al principio no sonríe, pero le ofrece un cigarrillo. Su mano tiembla. 
existe la diferencia racial, no es blanco, debe superarla, pero eso tiembla. Ella le dice que no fuma, no, gracias. No dice nada más, no le dice déjame tranquila. Entonces tiene menos miedo, entonces le dice que cree estar soñando. No responde, no vale la pena responder. ¿Qué podría responder? Espera. Entonces le pregunta, ¿pero dónde viene usted? Dice que, es la hija, dice que es la hija de la directora de la Escuela Femenina de Sadek. He says again how strange it is to see her on this ferry. So early in the morning, a pretty girl like that, you don't realize it's very surprising, a white girl on a native bus. He says the hat suits her, suits her extremely well, that it's very original, a man's hat, and why not? She's so pretty, she can do anything she likes. She looks at him, asks him who he is. He says he's just back from Paris, where he was a student, that he lives in Sadek too, on the same river, the big house with the big terraces, with blue tiled balustrades. She asks him what he is. Il répète que c'est tout à fait extraordinaire de la voir sur ce bac. Si tôt le matin, une jeune fille belle comme elle l'est, vous ne vous rendez pas compte, il est très attendu. Une jeune fille blanche dans un car indigène. Il lui dit que le chapeau lui va bien, très bien même, que c'est original. Un chapeau d'homme, pourquoi pas Elle est si jolie, elle peut tout se permettre. Elle le regarde, elle lui demande qui il est. Il dit qu'il revient de Paris où il a fait ses études, qu'il habite sa deck aussi, justement sur le fleuve, la grande maison avec les grandes terrasses aux balustrades de céramique bleue. Elle lui demande ce qu'il est. Repite que es realement extraordinario verla en esta isla transbordador. Por la mañana, tan pronto, una chica tan hermosa como ella. Usted no se da cuenta. Resulta inesperado. Una chica blanca en un autocar indígena. Le dice que el sombrero le sienta bien, incluso muy bien, que resulta, sí, original. Un sombrero de hombre, ¿por qué no? Es tan bonito, puede permitérselo todo. Ella la, le mira, se pregunta quién es. El hombre le dice que regresa de París, donde ha cursado sus estudios, que también vive en Sadek. En el río exactamente, la gran casa de las grandes terrazas de balustradas de cerámica azul. Le pregunta qué es. He says he's Chinese, that his family is from North China, from Fushun. Will you allow me to drive you where you want to go in Saigon? She says she will. He tells the chauffeur to get the girl's luggage off the bus and put it in the black car. Chinese, he belongs to the small group of financiers of Chinese origin who own all the working class houses in the colony. He's the one who was crossing the Mekong that day in the direction of Saigon. Il dit qu'il est chinois, que sa famille vient de la Chine du Nord, de Fuxuan. Voulez-vous me permettre de vous ramener chez vous à Saigon? Elle est d'accord. Il dit au chauffeur de prendre les bagages de la jeune fille dans le car et de les mettre dans l'auto noir. Chinois. Il est de cette minorité financière d'origine chinoise qui tient tout l'immobilier populaire de la colonie. Il est celui qui passait le Mekong ce jour-là en direction de Saigon. Le dice que es chino, que su familia procede del norte de China, de Fuchian. ¿Me permite que lleve a su casa en Saigon? Está de acuerdo. El hombre dice al chofer que recoja del autocar su el equipaje de la chica y que lo meta en el coche negro. Chino. Pertenece a esa minoría financiera de origen chino que posee toda la inmobiliaria popular de la colonia. Él es quien aquel día cruzaba el Mekón en dirección a Saigon. Never again shall I travel in a native bus. From now on, I'll have a limousine to take me to the high school and back, and from there to the, high, to the boarding school. I shall dine in the most elegant places in town. And I'll always have regrets for everything I do, everything I've gained, everything I've lost, good and bad. The bus, the bus driver I used to laugh with, the old women chewing betel in the back seats, the children on the luggage racks, the family in Sadek, 
the awfulness of the family in Sebek, its inspired silence. Je ne ferai plus jamais le voyage en car pour indigène. Dorénavant, j'aurai une limousine pour aller au lycée et me ramener à la pension. Je dînerai dans les endroits les plus élégants de la ville et je serai toujours là à regretter tout ce que je fais, tout ce que je laisse, tout ce que je prends, le bon comme le mauvais, le car, le chauffeur du car avec qui je riais, les vieilles chiqueuses de Bethel des places arrière, les enfants sur les portes bagages, la famille de Sadek, l'erreur de la famille de Sadek, son silence jamais. Nunca más haré el viaje en el autocar destinado a los indígenas. En lo sucesivo, tendré a mi disposición una limusina para ir al instituto y para devolverme al pensionado. Cenaré en los locales más elegantes de la ciudad y seguiré allí lamentándome de todo lo que haga, de todo lo que deje, de todo lo que tome, tanto lo bueno como lo malo, en el autocar el chofer del autocar con quien me reía, las vie viejas mascadoras de tabaco de, de Betel en los asientos traseros, los niños en los puertas equipajes, la familia de Sadek, el horror de la familia de Sadek, su silencio genial. Ok, so that was the first part with a little bit of editing of The Lover by Marguerite Dura. We hope that you guys enjoyed it. Um, it's definitely a trip down memory lane for me. I had to read this book when I was in college, so I'm going down my very own memory lane right now. Um, thank you for sharing. So we are going to come back on camera now as we start the discussion. We hope that you guys will also join us as it takes place. Um, so we would like to know, and feel free to type in the question section um, your answers for this. What emotions or thoughts do the author's fixation on details evoke? And if you feel like sharing something personal, uh, what details have been important for you in looking back at significant events? And maybe while everyone is typing and discussing, I could throw it over to either Amanda or Lisa. Well, I think it's, um, you know, the, uh, let's see, I was thinking, it seems like in the narration, it does go back and forth a little bit from the first person to the third person. So I think she's inserting herself and removing herself from what is maybe in her mind. I mean, memory is always open to interpretation, but fact and what is kind of interpretation over time, which is something I think is is quite interesting there, you know. Um, so, and I think there is the kind of what we all feel it's, you know, some things, stick with you so clearly and some things you know when she's talking about where did they get the hat it's such a, such a significant hat she discusses it in detail but she can't remember exactly how it came into her possession so i think that's interesting and something we all kind of um you know the memory is kind of you know shimmery at times some parts are very clear and focused and some are a little more out of distorted and out of focus so i think that's something we all maybe relate to a little bit depending on our age brains are weird <laughs> they are weird fascinating fascinating I think so I do. Uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, sure. Well, I do think there is a little bit of a sense of time gone past, and she keeps talking about the river and the flow of the river. She does it even more later on in the story if you guys keep reading it. So, just kind of the thought that there's no real clear way to really remember what she was wearing. She's kind of like, well, it must have been this or it must have been that. But she does have a lot of details about it, like unexpected details. So that kind of reminded me a little bit about how I remember events in my life. I have a jacket I've had for about 20 years now. It's right here, actually. Oh, <laughs> props. I know, show and tell time. So this jacket I was wearing, I remember when I met my husband and it still fits me, so I still wear it. Um, <laughs> but also, I kind of don't really remember how buying it came about. I just remember there were some family members and we had a big discussion about this jacket because we were traveling in the United States and we had a limited budget to spend on clothes. And, and I remember thinking, hmm, how did I get this jacket? I don't really remember. It must have been my aunt who said this and it must have been my brother who did that. And that did remind me a little bit of how the author goes about extrapolating what she must have been wearing on the river. I think um, something also interesting is, especially at that age, that kind of 
between childhood and womanhood or childhood and adulthood, if you're a, a man or a woman, uh, you don't remember exactly. I mean, she has a lot of details about her clothes, but you also remember because of the way you, they make you feel. And the hat, it's less significant, the hat itself, but like it made her feel mysterious and a little bit special. And like the high heels, again, like that was her graduation from like children's shoes, white canvas, which actually I wear all the time. I relate more to the, uh, the white canvas. I do wear, I wear heels in the office, but we're not in the office very much anymore. Uh, <laughs> so uh, those are my work shoes, but it, the way it makes you feel, and it made her feel, you could tell, adult. And I think that's what, I mean, maybe the audience is guessing where this is going with the gentleman who approaches her on the river, but I think that's what empowers her to speak to this adult man who kind of approaches her. Well, if there's anything else, feel free to just give some last minute comments, you guys. I do think it is about time for us to wrap up, but if you are typing, we will, of course, I'll look forward to your comments and hopefully you had a good time. I do have one last poll I wanna run for you guys. And if you're not typing something then, I hope that you guys will type something now. I really want to know what will you guys, and we do have a comment, which is great, but I would like to know, what are you guys planning on doing for the rest of the evening? Are you gonna read The Lover? <laughs> you can check it out from the library. Are you gonna read something else? Let us know in the comments. Um, that was your reading for today. What else are you going to do for the rest of the night? Ooh, I feel special. I feel like we got a lot of people who said that this was the reading for tonight. Maybe you'll leave us a comment and let us know what else you're going to do. So I think we do have a comment if somebody wants to read it. Uh, Lisa? Let's see. I don't know if I can. I'm actually not seeing the comment on my screen. I'm sorry. Amanda, would you like Never. to read a comment? It says, well done presentation. Thank you. And love the three languages. Well, we love sharing the languages as well. And we're so glad you can join us for that and enjoy a little bit of each piece of the, each piece of the story in different languages well we are on we're going to go ahead and wrap it up for tonight if you do want to share anything any closing thoughts any recommendations or if you said um, i know some of you quite a few of you said this is not maybe your genre if you want to tell us what you are interested in in the comments uh go ahead and let us know what kind of genres would you like to see in one book one night mm -hmm. coming up if you do want to contact the library for any purpose uh, using your library card finding or using some of the resources we talked to you about mango we love canopy we love all sorts of great ones. You can call us at 813-273-3652, or you can always contact us online at hcplc.org slash contact. If you wanna share this uh, this whole evening, this reading was about sharing her story. If you wanna share your library story, we would love to hear it. Is there a way the library has touched your life or something you wanna share about with using the library has made your life easier or better anyway? We would love to hear that. So you can always submit that at hplc hcplc.org slash about slash libraries and then of course to look for more events that are coming up um little preview next month we are doing gasparilla maybe in a question mark but we are still going to do all things pirate we are going to be doing treasure island which is a classic and that is going to be a family event so if you have little ones big ones it is a great robert lewis stevenson book for all ages and another little preview in may we are going to be doing mystery month with the queen of mystery Agatha Christie, and we may be mixing up the languages a little bit. We may be introducing something new, so stay tuned for that. And you can find more great events at hcplc.org slash events. So I'm gonna take one last sweep of the questions section and see if we have, I think that is the end of our questions. So we will go ahead and bid you a wonderful Friday evening, and we hope we will see you at an event very soon. Hi, everyone. Bye. Bye.